All right, this is going to be one monumental episode of the Productive Conversations podcast. The reason why is because, one, we have an all-star cast to join us. Before we get into it, I just want to introduce uh, Brian McKeon, good friend of the show is here. Brian, what's going on? How are we doing, everyone? Just having fun. Thanks for inviting me. Absolute pleasure. And we have Erica from Italy. <laughs> Erica, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, I'm good. I'm drinking my stuff. No, I can't do this stuff. Can't. <laughs> oh, we're so excited to have you. You're going to pull it off. It's going to be a great episode. Then we also have the Ancharis back there, Samuel Anchari. What's going on, gentlemen? Hey, where's hanging here? Shout out. What's going on? What's going on? Shout out to my ex. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good segue. So what we're all doing here is we're gonna discuss dating. So we're all in our 20s. We're all, you know, trying to figure out what dating is, whether it's short term, long term. Monumental relationship, fantastic one night stand, or maybe the opposite of both. But we're here basically just talking about our experiences, trying to understand from both perspectives, the male and female, and we're trying, hopefully we'll all get something out of it and we're going to be productive most of all. So this is going to be fun. No, this is not exactly a you know kiss and tell type of podcast. This isn't us venting and being sad about our exes and stuff. This is literally us... I'm going to throw topics out there regarding the world of dating. I just want to hear your guys' opinion, and uh, guys and girls, I should say. And we'll go from there. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun, and, you know, let's get to it. You guys ready? Here we go. All right, every single one of you? All right. So this is how it's going to work, as I said. I'm going to throw out a topic that I came up with or heard of, and it's all revolving dating and what dating means, you know. Specifically here, we're going to talk about you know, a guy and a girl who like each other very much and may not like each other, or one likes one more than the other, and we will talk about our various experiences. And hopefully we can also relate it to all orientations as well and make it a good thing for everybody because dating is something, no matter what your orientation is, that is definitely a challenge at times, but also very rewarding. So we might be focusing a lot more on, you know, heterosexual dating, but we hope that we can make this relevant for everybody. And I just want to put that out there because it's important. So with that, everybody's ready. We're going to throw the topics out there and we're going to have a good time. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So where do I begin? How about I say, what's, you know, dating, right? <laughs> Something else. Before I pick the topics, like, how's your dating, not, not the words like how's your dating like personally, but has dating been something like, Hard to figure out for you, or am I just bluffing? And maybe I'm just a hopeless romantic. Who we'll start with that? All right, so I'll start with me. So like me, like I was more of a like late bloomer. So like, I really didn't start like actually going on dates until college. You know, mm -hmm. I went to like an old boys' school and high school, focused on my sports and stuff like that. So I was just right. like you know into me. Um, and then I hit college, and I was like, holy shit, women, this is amazing. <laughs> um, where have you been all my life? I should have opened my eyes a little bit sooner. So, you know, I had to learn the ropes quick and stuff like that. Got a girlfriend for a little bit of time, broke up, blah, blah, blah. Another girlfriend again, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just feel feeling the game and vibing and stuff and whatnot. So uh, there's been some challenges, there's been some lessons learned. But I feel like by now I have a little raps and, you know, understand a little bit of the game this far, you know, so far. But, you know, just enjoying that and fun. It's all about the process. Definitely about the process and deal. What about you, Erica? So, Erica, you are from Italy. Mm -hmm. We're so happy to have you here in the United States, here in Thank New you. Jersey. I'm sure you've had various experience. You could actually say this in both countries, but we'd like to hear from your perspective, how is dating? So, um, dating in Italy and dating here is very different. Mm -hmm. And since I moved here, like, I kind of like understand how dating works here. And I didn't know, like, at first when I moved here. And so I was, like, shocked. <laughs> when I came here, because like, what you do is kind of weird, but <laughs> um, I guess like dating is different in every age, so when you grow up, you have like different, like, uh, you're looking for different things, mm -hmm. and you want to settle down for different things, and I feel like at this age, I've done like both, like I've done the, like kind of um, love at first sight, Thing. So mm -hmm. now I'm looking for other things, and like I feel like everyone, I feel like this is how it works for everyone. Like as when, when you grow up, you you're like looking for other things rather than just like oh, 
that person is beautiful, I like spending time with that person, no matter what, uh, what are their like ideas or whatever, I want to just be with that person, but like growing up is different. So I think I've like experienced both kind of things, so I'm, I'm still not ready to <laughs> say something. Oh, it's all good. I think it's something, like you said, that everybody's trying to figure yeah. out. And, like, that's the point of this podcast. As we're still trying to figure out, we can at least get some perspectives. And moving forward after this, hopefully, we'll, um, things work out. And at the end of the day, as long as you get the respect and being a good human being, no matter who you date, get you to look at you know? I think people are making, like, dating much more, like, hard than it actually is. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, you just need to be honest on what you're looking for and, like, what kind of person you are. And then, if you don't vibe with that person or if, you, if you're, like, not looking for the same thing that that person is looking for, then, okay, um, just move on. Just, you don't have to force someone to be uh, something that they're not. And I feel like people are, like, stuck in this kind of thing. Like, I want to make that person, I want to make that person change so that the, that person will be, like, how I want. Mm-hmm. them to be but like this is not how it works and it's, it's much more easier if, it, if you're just honest and if you just tell like how you are and what you're looking for how you're feeling in the like dating thing so it makes things much more easier like n- there's no need to play games and blah blah, blah that stuff. yeah I appreciate that honesty there that's that's really wholesome mm-hmm. and uh, I think you hit the nail on the head it's a human thing I think we're all trying to get, and uh, sometimes it's easier for other people, and sometimes it's harder, but I think there's someone there for everyone, I like to think, and as hope long so. as you, <laughs> hope so, for Definitely sure, hope right? so. and as long as you, you know, put yourself out there, most of all, before we go into our topics, at the end of the day, if you be yourself, and you're kind, good things will happen, I really think that, and before we vent and tell funny stories and stuff, at the end of the day, does it really matter that much? Not really. Does it matter that you have to get so stressed out about somebody? I think somebody special in your life should at least help you make it easier to try to get to know them. And, and sure, that takes time, and sometimes it happens when you're 20, sometimes it happens when you're 50, but again, as long as you're a good person, something will happen. You'll, um, you know, you'll have somebody really fall for you. I have to interject on this right now. I'll say one thing before starting. There is no right or wrong way to date. It's about finding the right person mm-hmm. that fits with you. And I always felt this, you know, love is about finding the broken pieces that fit together with yours. And that's the key. You need to find the right person that c- crashes and molds with your gr- your sponta- spontaneity, your greatness, also your sorrow and your bad feelings. It's all about the holistic, you know, being of that person, that's the important thing. You can't just be at the surface, you can't just be there at the happy moments. You have to be there for everything. So that's the key, I think, as we go throughout this. Absolutely great stuff. And Achari, boys, do you have anything to add to this? Um, Yeah, I was actually going to say, I was actually going to agree with him that, you know, it's not always going to be the good stuff. And that's the thing that I think we assume when we're in a relationship that everything's going to be peaches and cream, it's going to be fun. But, like, a relationship takes work. And people don't want to put in that work a lot of the time when they get in a relationship because they're like, oh, this is the honeymoon phase. This is really fun. Mm-hmm. But then things do get difficult. Like, you guys aren't going to agree on, agree on everything. And then when those things happen, I think that's when people get scared and kind of back out. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And you're good over there, Sandra. <coughs> yeah, so somebody with multiple failed relationships. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really looking for the answer in anybody at this point. I'm just looking for somebody that I uh, kind of feel that lets the feelings organically uh, multiply. And I feel like, uh, for whatever reason, like we try to project the selves we want to be without being that person at the time. And you kind of just don't attract the people that you need in your life at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, you're working towards a failed relationship. So. I don't know, I'm still figuring it out. I'm 27, I don't have time left, but uh, every girl did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you were better than I was ready for, so I'm going to leave it at that. How can we end it off any better than that? That was, that was sweet, but seriously, appreciate you all with the great thoughts and insights, and we're all going to, somebody's going to be very lucky to have all of us 
whenever that time comes. So until then, let's figure out, let's look back, and let's have some fun with this. Let's uh, talk about some dating stuff. So like I said, I have a list of things to talk about. Just going to throw it out there. What do you think? So let's get to it. There's this one term that I think that I've learned that everybody, no matter the generation, whether you were texting, go through the pay phone, you get the 20s talking like this or whatever, ghosting. All right. How do you define ghosting? That's how I'm very confused. Oh, okay. We'll definitely get into that, Erica. That's already that's exactly why I love your insight. Ghosting, which is when, you know, specifically in dating, when you're talking to someone and they disappear. You know, one day they're, they're sending you uh, beautiful messages about your support, how much they appreciate you, how much they can't wait to see you, and then they go. I don't know. They don't text back. So basically when somebody does a text back, email back, call back, that's ghosting. And I wish I could say I've never ghosted, but I admit I have in the past. I've been better at it, but I've ghosted people before that I should have been more of a man and said, hey, I'm not interested. But at the time, I wasn't because I didn't like it when somebody did it to me. So now I'd like to be as transparent as I can get. And then anyone I'm talking to, i got to be ready. I am okay to tell them this isn't working out. And of course, sometimes that has worked in my favor in the sense that, you know, some people are understanding, some people don't get it, and then they send, they call you an ass. Like one person called me an ass once uh, in Snapchat. Um, well, I deserve or not, I said, I don't think this is working, and they called me an ass on Snapchat. And, uh, I. Cost of doing business. It's, it's cost of doing business. But of course, I, it's not fun when. You're vibing with somebody and they don't respond to you for whatever reason. Um, Brian, you have, I'm sure you have some words on the ghosting. Yeah, I would say I hate ghosting. I just don't think, like, I'm an old school kind of guy. Like, if I don't, I'm not vibing with a girl or, you know, I'm I just don't feel it. I'm just going to be, I'm going to be up front with her and I'm going to be honest. I'm saying, you know, wrong time, it's not working right now. I'm not feeling this. You're a cool girl, you know, fun, but it's just not clicking. And, you know, I don't like ghosting because, like, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel good when someone just cuts you off completely. Yeah, like, because, you know, it, you think, what did I do wrong on mm -hmm. the other side? And it's like, well, then you start questioning you when you really shouldn't be questioning you. It could just be that that person wasn't right for you. Yeah. And you don't know. You don't have an answer. There is no closure. You know, I'm someone that likes closure, likes your response, likes the last word kind of thing of like, let me know what happened. And when you don't get that, you know, you start psychoanalyzing your own self and you're like, what, what, what did I do wrong? Was this the right person? Did I, did I try too much? Did I text her too much? Did my double text her that time? Was that the wrong thing? Even though I was just asking a question that, you know, I knew she wasn't going to respond to. So it's like, you know what I mean? What's you just got to figure it out. So, you know, it definitely gets complicated. I think you're right. It's all about the figuring out. I mean, you, you feel like an ass when somebody doesn't respond. But you have to remember some people aren't, are too much of a coward to, to be honest with you, you can't take that personally either. And as I mentioned, there was times where I was a coward doing it. But I really think since the year 2019 that I don't do such a thing anymore. And um, that's what I have to say about that. Um, ghosting is quite aggravating. Uh, before we get with, with you, Erica, because mm -hmm. you mentioned this doesn't happen where you're from. I'm very interested to hear that. But on Charlie's, with the ghosting too, isn't it, uh, how do you guys feel about it? Um, I was actually going to say, I think what it is, is like what Erica had said, like, it comes back to being honest. So it's like, when you aren't honest, it's like, oh, you know, I wasn't really feeling this. I don't know how to say it. Rather than just being honest, let me just disappear. I feel like they think that's the easy way out of it, but like, I'd rather, me personally, I'd rather you just be straight up like you're not feeling this. And I feel like we'd all want that, but rather we all take the easy way out sometimes. I've done it too. So I feel like with ghosting, it kind of feels like, oh, you know, I don't even want to do the work of, like, you know, rejecting someone. Because, one, we don't like getting rejected, and I don't think we like doing that to someone too. So I guess this is kind of like the easy way, like let them down easy kind of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Definitely, definitely. 
I'm a little different. I personally don't care. I feel like everybody's on their own uh, kind of social scale here. No way can operate with the next person, like able to, you know, kind of fall in line of what you want them to do. Like people have their own social skills. I got to understand that a girl might not be comfortable coming to me, mm -hmm. saying that kind of stuff. So I really don't care. If I get ghosted, I'll just move on. Like it's just whatever to me. Like you're not texting me, like I'll gladly not text you back. She like everyone. Yeah, but I also post a lot of people myself. So. <laughs> but I also feel like it's like, how long are you talking to that person yeah. before yeah. you get ghosted? Yeah. I think that's the important part is the yeah. length of like, like, I've been ghosted, but it was like, let's say I matched with a girl on Tinder, it was like... You want to come back to my place because that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. Uh, oh, I was stealing your. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was just <laughs> saying like. <laughs> oh, your topic points. My bad. Um, no, I was just saying like because I've like talked to people on Tinder. It would be like three days and then it just ends like that. So I don't. Maybe that doesn't feel as bad. I feel like ghosting is like worse when it's like you're you're investing in this person and then they kind of just throw it away. And I think yeah. it's the length of time is what really makes it like damn, this sucks as far as ghosting. You know, I'll agree with you on that. Like, if it was only online, I wouldn't, like, and got ghosted, like, I wouldn't feel bad. But I took a girl out on, like, two dates, three dates, or something like that. You know, even a date, something really nice, you know what I mean? Like, you know, dinner, like, you know, went to, like, go see something, like, you know, and then got ghosted. I just feel like, you know, just do the service of saying you're not vibing with me because I to put that effort in. I at least want something saying, you know what? I'm not vibing it, but thank you for that time. I did enjoy it. It's just we're just on di two different like you know mm -hmm. time frames right now. Perfectly okay. I've ghosted before, you know, online and stuff like that. And you know, like I feel bad, but it's like you know sometimes you just sometimes I feel you have to ghost not because you know you're not into the person, because you, you know you are not into the person, and you know, you want to just like not deal with it. But you have to teach them a little bit of a lesson. It's like the way in which you're going about it, especially on like online dating apps and stuff like that, the way in which you're going about talking to me, you need to get put in check. And a way of ghosting is saying, wait, this didn't work. They learned a lesson from that. Don't act this way. And I feel like that's a teaching tool. Ghosting can be a teaching tool for people sometimes when it comes to putting them in check. Yeah, I think we all need that honesty sometimes. Great stuff there. Now, Eric. You say everything. <laughs> Erica, no, so you are from Italy. Yes. And the first thing I said when about ghosting, this doesn't happen where you're from. Can yeah. you elaborate more on that? So from my from my experience, so maybe it was different from someone else. But so in Italy, it's like the dating thing is completely different in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, so here you can like talk with a lot of people. You can go and date with a lot of people at the, in the same like period. That's not how it works in Italy for me. So mm -hmm. like if you go if you go on multiple dates with the same person, it's because you wanna like get in a relationship with that person. If you wanna just like hook up or stuff, mm -hmm. you you don't even go on dates. Like they don't even take you out on dates. Guys don't take you out on date on dates if they just wanna have sex with you. Mm -hmm. Or they take you on one date, say do what you wanna do, and then they're just telling you like, hey, I don't want anything else. So the ghosting thing um, happened here, like for me. I haven't been ghosted actually, but I Ooh, okay. <laughs> but I've ghosted people. Mm -hmm. So what what you were saying is right, like if I ghost some ghost someone um, after talking with them for like three days on Tinder or Hinge or whatever, it's not really ghosting. Like we have so much, like, uh, so many um, options on, with dating apps. So if you talk with someone for a while on, on the app or like with via text or whatever, and you don't meet them, and you just stop texting them, it's not really text, like, it's not really ghosting because like you haven't met yeah. them, uh, like you just found that someone else was like more interesting probably, so. That's true. And also I think that sometimes People are scared to tell the truth, like uh, to tell someone that they don't want to uh, hang out with them anymore, they don't want to keep like the thing going, because when you talk with someone, you kind of understand what like their vibe is, so you understand if someone can actually get mad with you, 
if you stop if you stop yeah. if you stop uh, texting them. So you're you're kind of you know I don't want to deal with these, so I'm just gonna ghost them because I know they're gonna get mad, they're gonna be an alpha, an alpha, whatever. Right. So fair point. Excellent. Tell them you don't wait for that. Yeah, with that, uh, we definitely hope nobody has to ghost because they feel uncomfortable. But I guess well, I don't. I guess like sometimes you do. Like every situation is different, and nobody should be in a um, uncompromising position like that. And that's when you know blocking comes in, mm -hmm. and it's appropriate. Like if somebody's being absolutely appropriate, leave them. It's not worth it. And yeah, we were just only focusing on you know we met the person, they go on on dates, and then they disappear for whatever reason. At the end of the day, what you said and the theme everybody's saying here is the honesty. That's all we're asking for is the honesty. And sometimes you have to understand. Sometimes you're gonna get it. Sometimes you don't. But you know who's gonna be the genuine out of this. And as long as you don't ghost like people have done in the past from here on out, I'm sure it'll be a little more smoother and get some better calm out of it. I'll definitely say this stuff. Um, if you go on a date and you someone spends money like ghosting, like yeah, you should not go. So like, you should just give a reason because like you don't know someone's financial situation. Like someone can really like you and be dirt broke and really scratch the barrel to take you on a really really nice date and like went well above their means for that. You know what I mean? And like that's why I always think I'm like imagine if like someone really doesn't have a, like a lot of money and they took me on a crazy like five star dinner to SDK in the city, went to a Broadway <laughs> play, you know, <laughs> matinee, something like that, right? And it's like, then you go stuff, it's like, they really, they, they, they lost, you know, they were eating ramen for a few days during that week, you know what I mean? They didn't go out with their boys that weekend, you know what I'm saying? But they really, you know, saved up that money and they wanted to give you a good time. Even if it didn't work out, it was more, they wanted to enjoy that experience. Give them the courtesy and just be like, I see the effort you put in, it's just not vibing right now. Totally okay. That's what I'm saying. It's about like the investment you put in that makes it hurt a lot more. Because when you're pursuing something with someone, you're putting your time, whatever it's, whether it's money, into that person, and then for them to just disappear is kind of like wow, like that really sucks because like I saw something there. You know what I mean? So like it makes it like it's the investment you put. You hope like they put that back into you, but like rather than that, they just disappear. It's like damn, that really sucks. You know what I mean? That brings up more of a bigger issue of should we really be doing expensive dates in the first few dates? Should we do nope. little things, for, you know, low cash events, free things, going to places like parks and stuff like that. Stuff that isn't really a big gesture of, oh, I got cash. Because that's a big turn off sometimes, people, when you're showing your high roller and everything like that. Doing little things like that so it's not that much of an ego hit. And not that much of a monetary hit where you're like, damn, I just like spent all this money and you don't appreciate that. So it definitely goes into that as well. I think this perfectly transitions into this next subject is the first date and that etiquette and the cash, right? It really bothers you. And that my very last date was like that. My rule, personally, first date is you either get a drink or a milkshake. I don't think coffee. How, do I, how am I going to... Establish a connection at 10 in the morning with you on a weekday. Maybe some people will love, I just personally can't. But I think the first date should be just a drink or a milkshake. And the question I'll throw out there is regard the, the pain of it. Because I can better, I can be better suited if I get ghosted and I only spent $4 or four, if I spend money on four drinks. That's an easier pill to swallow than. An eighty to one hundred dollar dinner. Like for instance, that's with me. Last person I date, I thought they liked me. If I could show you the text, is how could you not expect them to like you with no, all the yeah. things they were saying? Uh, great guy, I like everything about you. I love your hugs, all that. And um, then they go, and I feel like I might as well have burnt eighty dollars, eighty five dollars, whatever I spent the last time. And I broke my own rule because, like, oh, this person seems to check the boxes. And even though I think when I first met him right away, the little parts say, this, ain't, this person ain't shit to you, won't be. They might come off that way, but they, they played you like the fiddle. And it, it's fine, it's whatever, but that's when the, the, the sting of um, breaking my own rule, maybe this is on me. I went to a dinner, and this place sucked so much. This was one of the worst places to ever eat 
Mexican food in Clifton, New Jersey, like you might as well go to McDonald's. Would you go? Some satisfaction. I can't say. It. I won't say. It. <laughs> you can cut. It, it's it's um, initials L F. I'll say that. So put that. Um, but back to this why I'm bringing this up. First date. I know traditionally, and we're speaking of uh, in the heterosexual sense, the guy pays for the girl. That's like the ultimate tradition, right? And as time has gone by in generations, like people I've gone out with, let's split it. And you know what, for me, it's like, you know what, you're right, let's split it. And whether that ruins my chances or not, I don't know. This is why I have somebody awesome like Erica to help bring that perspective. When it comes to the first dates, this is me as a male asking a female, should the guy pay first? Should it be split or what? So in your girls don't like cheap guys. This is the thing. So they're gonna pay. Especially like if, if, if they ask you out, they're gonna pay. That's the thing. Mm. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. So you agree with that tradition? Guy yeah. pays for the girl. Okay. Also, like it depends. Like it depends on like how the person is. So I don't feel like speaking up. Like for all the girls, yeah, yeah. but if you ask me out, you're gonna pay for whatever. Mm -hmm. um, if you're gonna ask me to split the bill, we're gonna split the bill, but I'm not gonna see you again. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad, but you know what? When someone spends money on you, when a guy spends money on you, it makes a guy because I'm a girl and I like other guys, but um, it makes you feel like special for them. It's sad. But that's how it is. Like this person is putting like time and money, like he's spending time and money on me because he wants to. So it means that he likes me. He wants he wants to do this for me. So I feel like I'm worth it. Right. That's a sad thing, but that's how it works for me at least. Mm -hmm. Now, whether from your friends or what you heard when they're like, say right away, hey, do you want to split it? What should the guy do? Should you think they should agree with them? I will split it with you. Or say, no, how about I get it? So, or you get the next one, or what? I've never been on a date where a guy asked me to split the bill. Mm -hmm. If they're going to ask, I won't say no, because, you know, I won't say no. Um, you know that, you know what, like, no one that I know like, no one of my friends told me that, oh, I went on a date with this guy and they asked me to split the bill. Really? Yeah. But, so, if I keep, that's the, the dating stuff. But, of course, like, if I'm in, like, if I'm exclusively, exclusively dating this guy, I pay for, for something, you pay for something else. But, like, in the dating stuff, like, in the first, in the courtship stage, I feel like they should pay. Do that, do that. What, what do you guys think? Gonna I, I definitely think so. Like in my eyes, um, I, I would say one left because you know I want you know independent women, everything. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I really like rather a girl not start paying for dates until we start dating. Mm -hmm. Like my idea is, I if I hit you up, I want to take you on a date. I'm paying for you. You know what I mean? And then going off of Erica, like the way I think about it is, if a girl asks to split. A bit like, oh, I'll pay for some of it, right? You have a very good test right now to see yeah, if, right? if she's interested. <laughs> this is what you do. Okay, you automatically, nah, nah, I want to pay for it. You can pay for tip, which you include in paying for a little bit of meal. And then you can buy, you, we can go to a bar right now, we can, you can pay for my first drink. Now you know if she's interested, she's going to go to another place with you after dinner. If not, then we know if she's cutting the bill right now because we cut her losses. Mm -hmm. That's the way I do it. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, I don't know, she, so the girl mentions it to me, okay, cool, automatically. All right, tip, you know, we work it out. You can pay for the tip right now, that's cool. You get to feel like you incorporated yourself, you show that you make money and everything, mm -hmm. which I respect and I find very attractive. We love independent women, all right? We love, we love the working lady, you know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, grab me a drink. You know, mm -hmm. grab, get my first drink, you know, grab a gin and tonic for me when we go to the next bar. Okay, cool, then we start going like that and start buying them. If she's not feeling that, we know it's not meant to be. Awesome stuff. Solid idea. I think I was just confused. Are we saying if a girl, just to clarify, are we saying if a girl says let's split it or if a guy says let's split it? 
if a girl says, let's split it. Like, if we're going with the tradition that the guy pays for the girl, and then we're saying, then she asks, hey, let's, the girl's like, hey, let's split it. I feel like that's like, I mean, like you said, is it a test? That's, that's what I'm like, trying to figure not out. Not every test. But I also yeah, feel yeah. like that's not what every guy that's is exactly like, why I'm here. Why can read here? those kind of like, <laughs> Because, I mean, if girls, you're getting this wrong, I'm not hanging yeah, out with I mean, girls do try to elaborate like point, that for you. Say this means one thing, but it means another thing. Right? And I feel like a lot of guys don't pick up on that. So, like, I don't think he's being an asshole by when you say something and he does it. I mean, like, I guess it's, it's reading those cues, I guess. But, like, some guys might be like, okay, she wants to split it. Okay, cool. Maybe that he takes that as, oh, she's interested. Like, she wants to split it. Like, oh, wow. Like, you can take it that way. No, there's definitely some girls that just genu- genuinely just want to be like, you know, I make money. I want to I wanna pay for this part of the bill. I have fun as well. I feel like I should, you know, give somewhat of a monetary value as well because I had a great time as well. Yeah. Which I totally get. But it's like, you know, on that first date, like, I asked you out. I want to I wanna, I wanna show you that, like, you know, the fun we had, like, I'm worth spending the money for and stuff like that. And it, it shouldn't be about money and everything like that, but it goes down to the brass tax when it comes on dates and stuff like that. But that's why we go back to what we were talking before. You do a first date that's, like, low-key and stuff like that. You don't get into that weird conversation mm-hmm. in the beginning. Because right there, that can hinder something. Not because, you know, that's, like, the ice, you know, the deal breaker. Just because you get caught in that, I would say, uh, Societal, like you know, Pandora's box. Yeah. Yeah. I think no one wants to get exactly tested. What's the point of dating if, well, they didn't impress this out or the other? It's exactly why you don't create a connection. But yeah, that's that's pretty solid, and I really like your perspective, Brian, and yours too, Erica. I think there, it's really there is a way that you can. You can turn it around. You can turn it around and make it of a. Oh, let's go to the next place. You you grab for drinks. The next time you grab drinks or something like that, or you pay tip, um, just to have them feel included and that you know they're being recognized that they're a contributing part of this relationship. So you know that you can do that. But like I also think you know just me, I'm an old school guy. Like I, I want to pay for every date and stuff like that and, until we start dating. Once we start dating, then it's more of a share and it's a culmination thing. When we're together. Like what he said. So I'd rather pay for something else like the next time mm-hmm. or like after but like splitting the bill I don't know it's I don't like it because it, it seems like okay the date wasn't that good so we're just gonna pay for whatever it it out. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we're just splitting it instead of like I, I'm gonna pay for the whole thing you're gonna pay for the whole thing so like I don't like splitting personally I'd rather pay for something else the next mm-hmm. time like pay for drinks or whatever but splitting, I don't know, I, I feel it's like, it's like, you know, it feels you know, weird. separately, yeah. yeah. It feels weird, it like changes the tone of everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Do you feel also, right before you, before we switch topics, two things. One, have you ever heard of people who will go on dates to get meals out of people? Yeah. Definitely have heard of it, yeah. And I, I've never, that's never happened to me, I hope not. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, yeah, I get that. Yeah, some people just want to have a good night and have some fun with it. Like, people that like, you know, oh, like I'm not interested in him, but I know he's he has, he's fun. He gives he has a good, you know, he's someone that gives a good date. He brings you to a nice place. He has a fun time. You'll go to like a, you know, like some like club nightclub, and then you go out for drinks afterwards, and you'll have a great night. He's just really a friend in your eyes, but you know, he thinks that it's more, and then you're not, you don't talk to him and say it doesn't work. Like. Surprise! Yeah. And do you feel there's any way you can notice that's coming? Like, man, I'm really here to get you free tacos or whatever. I think it comes down to how you plan the date. Yeah. Someone that's, oh, I feel, only looking for, you know, just like the free meal, which I hate saying that because I hope people aren't like that. But, you know, if it is the case, you know, there are people like that. Um, I feel that they're not as um, contributing to making the and more like, you figure it out, you do whatever you want, you know. And I'll eat the food. And I'll, this is okay, you know, I'm fine with anything. 
It's not they're not giving input. It's more of like a, a one word kind of answer. Yeah, show us some enthusiasm. Just enough enthusiasm to keep you interested, but not enough to be like, oh, actually, you know, I was thinking about this. You know, this is you know, we're going over here. There's this place over here that's really cool. It's a really nice spot. You'd like it. And it's next to this bar that afterwards we can go to. Once you incorporate a bunch of different like plans and opportunities and those things and options, then you're like, oh, this person is genuinely like is interested in me. And it's like, oh, I'm excited to see you and stuff like that. It's like, oh, they plan a date, sounds good, and then you don't hear about hear from them until like four hours before the date. Oh yeah, getting ready, I'll see you around this time. <laughs> then you know. Yeah, it seems kinda obvious when you can point those things out. If they say sure without with just a sure instead of a sure exclamation point. Yeah. Don't even bother. Or sure with three E's at the end. A sure with three E's at the end. She's good. She's, she's good. She's playing with you. Just a normal sure. You're like, ah. Oh, do you pay attention? Do you think that? Do you think? Yeah. Do you think that matters, Erica? Do you think that matters if they say the sure with the exclamation point, no. the hey with the two Y's, anything like that? I mean, not really. No. I think maybe it's an American thing. There's like a context mm. within mm. the text. Like, like, it's like it's like when you put a period at the end of your text. Mm -hmm. That's you're like, bad. Oh shit! It's like really serious. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness! They put a period. Exactly. Yeah. It's like that. I also think there's a big problem with texting. Like, I hate texting with people after like a couple of dates. I write FaceTime because the sarcasm does not get picked up. And there's a big part of like tell me about it. Big yeah, right? Big part part of like learning someone and learning their cues and like. You know what they like and stuff like that. What they dislike is f feeling them out, and it's very hard to feel people out in text. That's why I personally think that as we've gone in through society over time, if you look at the last hundred years, like marriages and stuff like that, and relationships, either divorce rates going up and stuff like that, besides the finances and shit like that, like the way we communicate as people has changed, and it's gone more a lot more digital, and you lose that human interaction. When you lose that human interaction, you don't understand people. Like, back in the day, you would literally have to call their parents' house <laughs> and be like, hey, is, uh, is Samantha home, blah, 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 and start, you know, and have a conversation and get to know that person. You hear that laugh on them. You know, we see LOL with like the emoji now. Are they really laughing? When you used to hear it, and you know what a forced laugh and a genuine laugh is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you talk to someone out, you see the, you know what an eye roll is. You know a good eye roll, and you know a funny eye roll is, and you know I'm just fucking around with you and having fun. Like a flirty eye roll. It's a two. We lose that through texting. That's why I love FaceTiming. And people are like, oh, I don't want you know. I'm not looking good right now. If I'm talking to you, I don't care if you like, don't have makeup on right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what's a what's a good like alternative? It's still kind of texting, but not really FaceTime. It's like voice notes. I feel like those yes, those absolutely. definitely add on the rise lately. Yeah, those definitely add like, a different dimension to texting. I mean, it's still texting, but like. It's that person, you know what I mean? It's not the words that you're reading, and you don't know what's behind those words, but like the voice changes a lot of things, you know what I mean? I'll definitely say this. Can you imagine Morgan Freeman back in the day with his voice? Can you imagine? Why? You know, you, when you have a good voice like that, it could work Say something for the rest of us. Literally. Yeah. So it's like, you know, voice memos definitely put in the repertoire now. Yeah, and I think this is good to talk about the texting aspect too. So from the points there, and um, Erica, I would love to hear your perspective, texting now is obviously big integrating that communication. Do you feel texting should be more of, especially early on, like making the plans and then let the interaction go from there? Or do you think this could be a way to show your personality or what? What do you guys think? Say? I feel to me like the college perspective, texting is huge. Texting is huge in college. And you know, I hate texting. I'd rather mm -hmm. meet up and talk. But you know you gotta play the game nowadays. I mean, I use texting more of like you know start and spark conversations that will lead later on. So like, hey, how was your day? Stuff like that. Then lead to other things. I may ask a question that is like maybe a little mundane that I wouldn't ask in person, right? Because it might just get blown over quick. But then I can bring it up later on in actual in person conversation. And then, you know. You could mention stuff. So it's like, oh, like how many siblings you have, blah, blah, blah. And then you get their names and stuff like that. And then when you're in person, oh, you know, how is this person, how is this person doing? And they're like, oh, you noticed, you remember that. Like you could use texting as a way to show that you are actively listening and, uh, 
you know, relating to that person in conversation. Like you can use it as a tool because it's in writing. You have it memorized. You know what I mean? You don't need to like, you know, yeah, right. oh my God, she has four siblings, blah, blah, blah. These are their names. They all go to these schools and these are their majors and these are their favorite hobbies. You have it written down and stuff like that. You have the things they like and then you can really just like, you know, before you go out, oh yeah, well, what, how is this? How's this going? You were talking about this before. You're interested in this. It gives you talking points for when you actually are a person. Great stuff. And I feel like just coming off my own experience, I played the texting game completely wrong <laughs> with this last girl. So Elaborate. So we had a date scheduled for two weeks from the point we started texting. That's too long. It's too long. Yeah. Yeah. It's too long. But she was busy the weekend that we could have gone and seen each other. So I'm like, all right, I got to keep this thing going for two weeks. I haven't met you before. We just matched in a dating app. Yeah. So I'm like, do I text you every day? Am I a good morning? How's your day? What's going on in your day? Good night? And just keep it going that way? Or do I just kind of fall back and let the thing happen organically? And then one day, maybe two days in, I text her, good morning. I get nothing back. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, now nah, that leads to this all kinds of crazy. I'm like, all right, so you didn't text me back. Do I send another text? Do I double text? Do I triple text? Ah! And so I, just, I felt bad for a couple days. Yeah. And then after that, she texts me, and she's upset saying, oh, well, you didn't reach out to check on me. Oh, oh well, you know, you, clearly you're not interested. And I'm like, well, I bought these tickets for us to go on this date. Well, I'm, I'm clearly interested. You know, I want to go on. I, I know you have things going on. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, harp on you. I've never met you before. <laughs> so I, the, the texting thing now, I'm kind of burnt out. I, I, for real? Yeah, I just don't care. I don't care. If you're going to hit me up, hit me up, I'll hit you back. But I don't want to get into the texting game because... If we're not going to meet in person, why are we even doing this? And if we plan to meet in person, like, come on now. I feel that 100%, and you bring up a good point. I raised this question already. So you talk about organic, right? But you also mentioned dating apps. Dating apps aren't organic. So do the organic no. rules apply in those situations of the good morning text in that two-week time frame? Or do we not do that? So there is no rules for that. We just have to go about it. And see, the issue is that no one, ha everyone has different opinions on the dating apps and how you respond. And it's just the luck of the draw of you meet someone that's like, oh, you know, we have planned in two weeks. I want to talk with you until that week. Or it's someone that's right? like, no, I want you to be like, hey, good morning, how's your day? What, you know, what coffee did you have today? Was it a macchiato? Was it a cappuccino? It's like, you know, you want to like figure everything about them and talk to them nonstop for two weeks. Oh, I care less. But then at the same time, you talk to them for 14 days. What the hell are you talking about on, on the first date? Yeah. At that point, exactly. you already had your first date through yeah. text. And it's like, you're like, oh, I know everything already. So, yeah. my place in the hour? Like, yeah, for doing? real though. So, like, what goes on? And that's the path I didn't want to go down. Yeah. But I should have. Yeah. I, I, think, I think everyone has a different expectation of what what a dating app means and what it's for. For real. And I feel like maybe from my perspective, my age, I remember like when these dating apps started, like Tinder, Bumble and all that. Mm -hmm. And I think, that, yeah, they were meant for dating. But at the same time, everyone's like, they're kind of like, they know what this really is. It's like, it's a hookup app. But I think over time it's evolved into it. Like, I think the apps took themselves more serious almost in a weird way. Like, yeah. They we, we are a dating app. But I think for a lot of people, when we saw it come out, it was like, oh, this is for like, oh, just to meet random people like to hook up with. So I think the expectation of, oh, I'm finding something serious on this is kind of like, you don't, that, that bar is low on a dating app. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It is. Like, I remember once, when you talk about the apps, I think sometimes, and especially this isn't ghosting, but, you know, no answers and answer. Like, you really got to look at the dating app like the bar, in the sense that this, my perspective, this girl likes me, finds me attractive enough for me to talk to her. From from the match. From like, the match. From like I literally match with okay. somebody at the bar. Yeah. Maybe we dance. Maybe this turns into something after. But then sometimes it turns to a boring conversation. Like, damn, you're really pretty, but I don't care about these things we're not vibing to. That's how I recently look at it like that. Like I literally looked at an email and I matched with that somebody who's finally attracted and either that, that attraction lasts for the two seconds they were spiking right, maybe they were That's the problem them. too, is that like the match is like it's I'm just serious. off they look off the looks. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you'll see like a lot of times I'll see in like girls' bios, they'll say like, 
Although, like, you probably didn't even read this. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> already, the, the doubt's already there, because it's like, you're just going off of what you see, swipe. Right? You're not even reading that. So, like, that, that match is just a physical attraction, I guess? Mm-hmm. Rather than, like, there, there's nothing else off of that. I mean, there's a bio, but, like, okay. And some people think that, like, this is, this is the big moment. I remember somebody, like, cursing me out. Um, so one thing I try, I don't do anymore is adding someone on social media while we're just talking. Mm. It's just, just so stupid, and I get burned for reasons like, oh, we don't vibe, but I have a new follower. And then when we couldn't ha- make plans to hang out for whatever reason, and I have all of these mess- long essays about how much of a terrible person I am because I didn't make these plans, you know, this, this stuff works both ways. And how could you get so upset with me and I don't even know what your voice sounds like and stuff like that? I'm sure you guys have had similar situations one way or the other. And Sam bring, brought up one. So I go a little bit the opposite. Like, I like giving, like, if I'm, like, talking, I won't do my social media day one. If I give my social media a few days after talking to someone, that's because I want them to see my life. So like I'm someone that on Instagram I post a lot, not because I want followers or I want likes. I like to live my life, show my you know, die with memories, not dreams. You know what I mean? So like I like to like photograph and keep everything memorized, you know, for the for the world, right? And it's like show my experience. So it's like if I want you to follow me, it's because I want you to see the little things I like to do. I want to sh- I want to show you the favorite bar that I tag a million times called Amadou Bach in the Bronx. I want to show you me when I go to a wedding in a suit in case if you need a plus one. But then, you know what I mean? Actually, uh, the best man for my brother's wedding uh, in December, it's either the second or the eighth, so you know, I'm looking for plus one. All kidding. Oh! Okay. It's this best for you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, should be a fun time. Um, you know, but I actually still have to write the speech, uh, so you gotta work on that. But you know what I mean? Like, I want to bring people into like my world, and it's like, through that, I, they get to see a little glimpse. No, I get to see a little glimpse. I get to see how they respond to things, what they like, you know what I mean? And, you know, you might be see who they follow and stuff like that. I don't stalk, you know, no one stalks, I feel. I know, people stalk, but, like, I don't like to do it. But I don't try to be, I know, I, I'm, a, I'm not a detective here. I'm not trying to do forensics right now, you know what I mean? So it's like, you get to give a little glimpse, because this scene, in, what is a dating app? It's the best pictures that you and your friends thought you looked good in, and then you find prompts, that you think will entice. And then from that, you try to attract people. So is it really your true self or it's just you putting out your best quality? A lot of people show their entirety on Instagram. And I only, not even on posts, stories. Stories are very important because that's where you see the emotion of someone. Posts are the good thing. Stories show the entire <laughs> body. And so true, it's like whenever you see that people post things, it's only the good things, but then you see the tag photos. Mm-hmm. That's the real uh, Yeah, it's yeah the that's the real us. Erica, I would love to hear your perspective with, regarding either texting or the dating app. Are we guys making it more complicated than we need it to be? First, I have a funny story about this. Um, guys follow me on my like Instagram after we match on the app. Mm-hmm. So there's this guy, I've never met him. Uh, but we follow each other on Instagram after we match on the app. And now he's like, he has a fiance. So I'm seeing his life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm what? seeing his life through Instagram, and I've never met him, but I'm very happy for him. <laughs> Good for you. I'll be honest though. Sometimes I'll start talking with someone on like you know like a dating app, like I would say not now, but like a year ago, and when I was like more like I don't really like dating apps now. I don't. I barely look at. I look at them. I have my notifications. I just like. I really don't like them anymore. But like, when I was like big into them, you know. If I like didn't go on a date with someone, let's say, but like I ended up following them, sometimes I even became friends with them. Yeah. Just because you see them, you comment, oh, good for you, congrats, and stuff like that. And sometimes that's okay. Like you know, maybe like the dating app is for dating, but sometimes if you get an experience out of it of like, oh, like this person's genuinely just like a good person, cool, like no harm, no foul. I gained a friend. That's okay. Yeah. Um, what I was saying, like he matched with a girl on Tinder, and they've been talking for like talking for two weeks and they planned a date like two weeks ahead. Yeah, that's what I see. Too, so. so if so you say you didn't text her like every day. No. You didn't talk with, like to each other every day. No. I think that you just weren't vibing in the first place because I don't know like I feel like texting
think is important before like before a first date because mm. that's how you kind of understand if you can like that person like if you like their personality if you like their like way to like um the humor and stuff so i feel that, that texting is super important before that and also if you haven't seen that person and you have to wait two weeks girls have a lot of other like guys like on options on dating apps. Me too. <laughs> You're here tonight so. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Girls have a lot because I I know it like a lot because I know how how guys wipe on dating apps. It's like wiping old they don't even look <laughs> like don't even look at the pictures. But I feel like if, if you want to go out with that person, you have to text that person. You have both of you like. It's all the momentum. Like that's that's key. Yeah, because you have to keep the thing like until you meet that person. Like you, I don't know how to say it in English, but you have to like. Um, progress. You have to gradually yeah. progress and get to know that person. Yeah, and if you just stop texting each other, the girl will probably the one person will probably think. That the other person is, mm-hmm. is texting someone else, so which is probably true. But like, if you want to meet that person, you should keep texting that person once a day. Like, hey, how are you doing? Blah blah blah. It doesn't have to be like a twenty-four hour thing, but you have to show that person that you are interested, and you have to keep up until the day you will meet. Seriously, that that's key. I think from both perspectives, if somebody says, hey, I'm not around for a week or two weeks, bye, they don't care enough about you. Who's yeah. busy for a week straight? And here's one thing with my perspective with dating, like, okay, fine. In fairness, yes, there are people who are legitimately busy for a week straight, but somebody busy will make the time for you. Texting takes three seconds, like literally texting something. Yeah, yeah. Three seconds. And, um, like, that, it's all momentum, and I think that's key, like, I always say the Channing Tatum test, anything in dating, it's specifically, if Channing Tatum, or let's just put any extremely attractive sex symbol, let's say for me, if, um, like, Ana de Armas said, hey, let's hang out tomorrow, I, I have to my feeling, I, we're, we're, I, I gotta do something else. No idea who that is, oh. let's just use Channing Tatum. Okay, fine. All right, if we're gonna say I'm not exactly sexually attractive to Channing Tatum, but Ryan I like Reynolds people. Guys, come on, we just told by Ryan Reynolds. Okay, Ryan Reynolds. We know we told by Ryan Reynolds. The bottom line. All right, we'll do the chain. I should have said my point. Channing Tatum yeah, says cool. to a girl, "Hey, let's hang out. Let's have a nice dinner and go from there." I think I like to think most of the time, or any famous celebrity, someone would take them up on that, and I kind of think of it that way too, like. If you're going to put yourself out there and say, hey, you want to hang out? Even if they're busy, they'll figure out a way to make it work. Right? Hey, they want to. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that's the point with these plans and stuff. I'll be honest, though. If I had plans, though, I don't cancel them on my, on my friends because the chance... Of let's course. Just, like, let's, let's just do statistics. The chance of a, really, a, a first day of working out to a relationship is small. It's slim. Mm-hmm. If you pick the right people, talking about dating apps. Yeah. If it's a dating app, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard because we don't know what, what, what person we're looking for. It could just be a hookup, it could just be, you know, a little, you know, that's, why you have, that's something you have to ask. No, yeah, exactly. No, absolutely. You have to, like, literally do your homework and really have conversations and have those talks before you do that. That's why you have to talk and don't go for, like, five days straight. At the same time, though, two weeks is too long, though, because, like, I brought up before, you then don't have anything to talk about on the first day. Mm-hmm. Sam, you're very animated. Do you have anything to say? I took it from Tinder to the DM. From the DM to text. Yeah, but you didn't text her back. And I felt flat on my face. I was like, how do I keep this going for two weeks? She invited me to the next level. Like, so she went from Tinder, said, hey, take my Instagram. No. Hey, take my number from Instagram. So the ball was in my court. I feel like it was just me to keep it going, and I just kind of downplayed myself. I was like, you know what? I don't want to burn out before I even get there. Like you guys are saying, like the first date's now two weeks away, and I could have made it more. Time. I could have made it more clear. Gr- 
granted, I'm hooking up with people along the way too, you know, she wasn't a main priority to me. So I guess along those lines, I let it slip. How long That's the thing. That's because neither of you were actually interested in the thing. Otherwise, you wouldn't find things to talk about. What could be those things to talk about as we're trying it to. It comes naturally. That's what I was going to say too. <laughs> and In two weeks, you can find things to talk about. And if it doesn't come naturally, it, that, it's not meant to be. Let me ask you this though: Who was asking most of the questions? You or her? It was like it was literally, literally fifty-fifty in terms of conversation. So she, I get her going on some topic, and she wouldn't stop talking. That could segue into something else, and it would just, just flow that way. But I knew this is like a game I'm playing, trying to go for two weeks. I'm like, I, I can't, like, in my mind, feel like I can give you the attention you need to keep this going. Because I went hard early on, texting her, hey, consistently, 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 consistently. I'm like, what am I even doing this? Why am I even playing this game? Like, I haven't met you yet. You know, it's, it's just kind of stupid in my mind. The way I saw it was like a stupid game I was playing with her. But I would say that, I mean, maybe a phone call would have changed that maybe too? And we did Change the, the dynamic? We did the voice notes. Okay. We were getting there, but it just never materialized. I just didn't want to talk to her that much, I felt like. So I, yeah, I, was, the I, interest I, wanted, I, I wanted to meet up with her. Oh, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then at that point, text her consistently. Okay. I didn't want to text you, give you all of my like time and devotion texting. If I've never met you before, if I don't even know if I'm gonna genuinely like you, mm -hmm. if I haven't met you, I feel. Like I I'm, think you just I just don't like texting too. I, I, I think, think that's I, part of it. And too. texting is not like the, my favorite thing to do. Yeah, yeah, that means that. I I felt we were working towards me texting her more consistently, but the gap in time, the two okay. week span, I could, I didn't want to put up that much energy for two okay, weeks. Okay, so and she got kind of mad because you didn't text her. So it means that you were just not meant for each other. Like, she's like a sexting kind of person. She wants like constant attention. No, hit me and up. No, <laughs> and like it's like... It's like just, Instagram. No, you just have to like <laughs> understand that you're not made for everyone. So if you're and not... And I'm okay like, with that. Yeah, yeah. I probably, if you mess up with a girl, you wouldn't... I don't know how to say English, but you wouldn't have... Uh, a vibe, maybe. Go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, it'll work out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because, like, she's, like, a sexting kind of... You don't like sexting? Yeah. You don't like... You're not, like, constantly on the thing. Like. I feel like she wanted a pseudo-relationship. Yeah, so you're not, you're not like and that. And I was so. like, well, what are we even doing? I don't even know you as a person genuinely to pretend to care about you that much. But if she's like this before meeting up, it means that that's how she is. So you can't change it. So you're just not not made for her, and that's fine. I'm the that's problem right. here. <laughs> no, no, no. That, no up, the problem. that also brings up a good point, though. It's like how long do you talk to someone until you realize that if you haven't gone on a date yet, it's done. Like in my eyes, it's like if it's been like 10 to 14 days, you're not gonna meet up because it's like if you really are interested. If by the time you talk for like two weeks, you know that person. Yeah. You know if you like them or something like that. You send the voice notes. You're saying right. If you're not meeting up now, it's done. And so if all you're doing really is just feeding into that person's attention that they want. Because you're the one saying good morning when they want to hear that, but they want to go about their day and go out and have fun and stuff like that. You're just giving them the little extra thing that they need in their day to make them feel a little better. You know what I'm saying? So like that's not all people, but you know, sometimes there are people like that, but it's just real. It's just like, you know what? This person's giving me the attention I need right now. It's almost like the emotional relationship, yeah. not the total relationship. Yeah. You're just feeding a part of the thing that they need at the moment, not what they want. I think that's what I thought I was playing. Definitely thought I was playing into that. Yep. Just a few more things on the texting before we switch it up. One, is there such thing as a bad texter? I don't think so. Yeah. Cool. You do think so? There are bad texters. Like, 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 okay, but and the only thing is, like, for this, and I, I get it. I'm the I'm the opposite of a bad texter. I'm too good. At, I'm too good at communicating. Yeah, if you text too much, it's not good. Yeah, but uh, what I meant by that 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 sounds very bad. What I meant by that is, I happen to always have my phone on me for texting and emails. I I'm up to date with whoever reaches out personally and professionally, but, like, 
is there somebody, if you're trying to get to know them, I just feel, and, and this is me, I'm not a, I don't understand this, this is why I'm asking the question, I'm bad at understanding if there's a bad texture or not, hence why I'm asking. I, I just feel that if somebody's on your mind, somehow, some way they'll communicate with you with that. Will they still be a bad texter despite that? Maybe they are, or will they try to at least fix that bad texting habit and they'll fix it for that for, for a specific person they're interested in. Like, are they a bad texter to, you know, their boss at work? Like, what, what is it? That's what I'm trying to understand. Is, if anyone has anything to say, I'd like to hear. I'll say, like, I'll agree with you. Like, I'm someone that doesn't shut the fuck up ever. See, even yeah. in real life. And it's like, I always have my phone. I'm not someone that's going to read, see that you text me and wait and wait three hours to respond. <laughs> right, yeah. I hate that. Like, I know the way that the world works. You have your phone. <laughs> You saw oh, the no. notification popped up. It then popped up again the second time because that's the way I have, the way iPhones work. Yeah. Okay? And you just said, no, I don't want to look and have a conversation right now. And then you're like, oh, hey, what's up? I hate that. Drives me absolutely crazy. But if you're busy, just text me. Busy right now. Talk to you yeah. later. Cool. Just literally just acknowledge that, hey, I understand you want to talk right now. And I get you're free, but I'm not. Don't just like be like, oh, like three hours later, oh, I was doing something, blah, 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 you know, how's your day going? Because then it's just like, I waited the entire day, you know, it's, you, you're going to think about, oh, why didn't you respond the entire rest of the day? Yeah, that's, that's like on, like, that's like growing up and then like more mature, like relationship mm -hmm. making. You have to communicate with that person. Like, you have a busy day, just tell me. I, I'm busy, I'll text you whenever, like, whenever I can. Even if you're having a bad day. Hey, yeah. I'm grumpy today, or like, I, I had a terrible day at work. Yeah. I don't really want to talk right now. Can we talk tomorrow? I'm sorry. Like, that's fine. We can FaceTime later or something like that. We talk tomorrow. That's, a da that's the dating phase, because if you're yeah. my boyfriend and you tell me I, I had a bad day and I don't want to talk with you. But that's a different <laughs> thing. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if I have a bad day, I'm like, babe, like, can you come over? I want to just, like, watch a movie and, like, vibe right now. Maybe we hang out and stuff like that and have a good time. Like, I have a bad day. But, like, if we're just, like, talking and stuff like that, you could literally totally okay just being like, listen, I'm having a bad day. I'm not feeling it right now. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And that's totally okay. The whole, like, waiting a day, oh, you know, I just, like, forgot. Or, I know there's people that, that, like, will leave you on read. They read it and just won't respond. And then they just, you, like, especially, well, like, not someone, but they have just friends. Yeah. And then you see yeah. them out and you're like, you saw my text, yeah, I forgot to respond. What do you mean you fucking forgot to respond? <laughs> Makes Why? no sense. Your mm -hmm. phone's right there. Fucking respond. It's not that hard. Yeah. It happens a lot. Like I forget to respond to my friends a lot of times. But like, with, like if I if, if I'm texting with a guy that I actually like, yeah. I would never forget to text them. No, absolutely. Like, I'm like, uh, you don't them. respond quick. It shows me disinterest. Yeah. But there's also people that I know are bad texters and don't respond quick. I'm also someone where I. My brain's constantly working, so like I might hit you up and like when I'm texting you and ask you two questions at the same time, mm -hmm. and that's not because I'm you know want to double text or something. It's because the way my brain works, I might forget about one of those questions at some point, and I don't want to wait until you answer the first question and then have to answer it again. I'm just gonna throw both of them at you. You take whatever time you want. That's why we have the reply button on. iMessage message now, where you could like highlight the text and reply yeah, to the individual out. text and single it yeah. out. Literally. I was a game changer, by the way. Huge game changer. Big, big, big. All right. Um, and then the DM sliding. Do you think it actually works? Like, if I went on Instagram and say, and we're talking about as non-famous people, because I've only seen famous people examples. Like, of course they're going to. You have a better chance. Well, that's, I think that's how story. they have to communicate, is, like, through the DMs. It's like, I can't just be famous and then it's like, I mean, unless you really just, like, fuck it, or like, whatever, yeah. I don't care. Because, like, I think, like, because then, oh, the blogs will pick it up, or whatever, all these. The blog, yeah, right, they, you're gonna get screenshot anyways. Like, like, that's that's a, you, excellent points. Like, that's a whole other yeah. uh, subject, the celebrities in the EF slide. But I'm saying for a regular person, do you, is it the same exact rules as texting? Is there any chance? Like, because Drake can DM slide a girl who will do whatever with him, that doesn't mean you're not Drake. You're Johnny or whatever. Like, is that the, the same thing? Should we even bother as regular folks or what? I rarely slide in DMs. I don't like them that way. I, I don't do it at all. I rarely, I like, I've only done it a once. few times. 
I wouldn't even slide. I might like the reactions on like in IG stories and right stuff, like, send like a, like a, like the heart like eye face and then be like, man, you know, like say something like something stupid or something like that. Usually I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'm just being stupid. I'm like, you know what, let me throw the lights line out, see if she catches it. Fuck um, man, yo, love. Yeah, why not? You know what I mean? But like, no, like I don't like that. Like if you know the person and you slide to the DMs, sus. Like just go like text the person, you know their number, or like you go see them out and talk to them. I like think especially me in college, it's like, you can find someone that, on, if you have friends with them on Instagram in college, you can easily see them throughout the week, in the hallways or something like that, or at a, like a party or something, just go talk to them. Yeah, maybe if you're too shy to talk to them in person. I get that, but like, if someone's too shy to go up to you and talk to you in person, right? Because maybe they're scared to be rejected in person, and like being, being like ignored on, a, on Instagram is different, like it's just not that. That yeah, that's definitely could be possible. I'm just, I would so rather be rejected in person. Oh, me. absolutely. Like, in, like in text, I literally read, I'm reading somebody take the time to tell me, no, <laughs> we are not going to make this work. And that's fine. Like, it stings for a solid five minutes and I move on. But at least in person, sometimes they don't even, it really doesn't phase me. Mm -hmm. okay, that's just me. Know. But, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm very outgoing. Yeah. I understand your point very well for somebody maybe more introverted that they're okay with that. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I don't slide into DMs. I feel like when you do that, there's this like, maybe this, I think, I think women have this like expectation of what this is going to be. Like, oh, okay, this guy, like, he's trying to do this again. Like, like, maybe they're so used to that kind of thing. So it's kind of like, oh, here we go again. Kind of, and I think they don't like that Oh, shit, here we go again. Yeah, like, oh, shit, here we go again. So I'm like, well, I feel like DMs like, has a very like sexual. That's like, that too. I it, think so that part like, too. So I think they're just turned off from that. Like, no, absolutely. Like you're sliding, like the term sliding into DMs, and just like even from like pop, pop culture and music and stuff like that, it's become sexual. Like there's no way I'm gonna be like, you know, slide in someone girls DMs like, you wanna go to dinner tomorrow? Like, come on. Like, no. <laughs> like, it's like it's it's two a.m. I got rejected at the bar. After twelve o'clock, you know, I've been shooting for tens. They go down by two every hour. I saw you on the story. You're still <laughs> out. No, let's roll dice and see what happens. Yeah, like, like like that's what that's what sliding to DMs are, and that's why I don't like it because it's just like I find it shallow. I'm not a fan of it. Yeah, that's why it works for celebrities, and the only that's why it only that's that's why it only works for celebrities. And the only example I've seen it quote unquote working as a celebrity. I mean, the, the, la the, only, the latest example I've seen, Dave Portman from Barstool, I guess, had his anniversary for his girl, and the first thing he ever said to her, hang out or not, but he has a status that can, that can, you know, he, he, he can say that. I, I think if I said that to someone, I'm like, they said, get the hell out of here, or... So, personally, mm -hmm. I think that if you slide in a girl's DM, someone's DM, or like, it, it's the same thing on, as on Dave. If you say something that's funny, that it's not like this. Hi, how are you? I, I'm not gonna text you. But I'm not gonna answer mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But if you say something funny, or if you say some, and first of all, if I think you're attractive, that's the first thing. If I think you're attractive, and you slide in my DM, and you say something funny, something I can actually reply back, back like not just not just a hi. Then I will probably say something back. The, and also like the same with people stuff. Like if someone with like a verified profile slides into my DM and they're gonna say hi, I'm not I'm not texting them, like I'm not replying to them. Because <laughs> first of all first of all, if like a famous person like um send me a text DM or whatever I know that they can do that the same thing with every other person, yeah. every other girl. So I, I don't know. I don't want, I'm not interested in going out with a famous person because I know I can be replaced like he is. So I don't want to do that. I'd rather go out with some with a normal person that may, that actually is interested in, in me only. I, I don't know. That's I wouldn't so that, so I wouldn't reply to a famous person that just like You have to be like confident and you have to show your personality if you text or if you fly into the person. 
I agree 100%. And shout out to a real gentleman who's anti DM, Jason Amoa, giving Kate Beckinsale his jacket after the Oscars right there, like a true gentleman right there. There's no better slide than giving the jacket on a cold night right now. I just have to say, <laughs> I love the effort and I give the support. Oh, attractiveness, right? I, Eric, can I ask you, um, and everyone chime in for this. So, when we were talking about the attractiveness, right? Let's say a very ugly person and a very attractive person said the exact same thing, even if it was clever and everything. It's, do you feel it's more for the attractive person? Of course. But what's attractive for me may not be attractive yeah, for someone else. Of course. Else, so. And like that's everyone's right. People can like what they like. Some people don't understand, but yeah. that's the thing we have to respect. But if, like, a, let's say a guy I will not go for, that can be the DMC, whatever. Something like really funny or like something I wanna like reply back. Like, if they show off their confidence and they have like a big personality, I will say something back. Even if they are not in my like personal like type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing, me and Sam throughout the years have always had various openers we've tried and tried to be more than the hey. Like things I've said and then recently, hey, what was the best thing you did today? I guess that's more to some and interesting to others. I've done the, the third thing, like, will you be my Tinderella? And that literally led to a relationship. They claimed they were embarrassed, they, not embarrassed, they claimed what I said was lame, but we would we were boyfriend and girlfriend, so yeah. what's the thing? It's, you should, bottom line, I bring this up, if you're trying, whether on an app or in person, you should really take the effort to be a little more clever, and it doesn't have to be that hard. Do you agree? Yeah. I think uh, that you, you just have to find a, pers a person with your same sense of humor, with, like a person just like you that you can vibe with. Mm -hmm. Bec there are girls that just, um, care about the looks. So if a uh, good looking guy for them, that's them, mm, whatever, they're just gonna say yes because that's what they're looking for. Not oh, not everyone is looking for the same thing. So it, you can be like the hottest guy, the hottest per person on the planet, but if I, if I just don't vibe with you or like if we're not on the same like Level? Yeah. <laughs> Level. Like, there's no way we're going out, even if you are, like, super hot. Sure. So, solid stuff, and uh, I'll definitely learn a lot from it. Um, one thing I want to ask, um, let's have a little more fun with this. So, next to the uh, dating and stuff, say you're about to go out on a night with your boys, your girls, all of that, right? Go to the bar. Various bars in the tri state area we can name here is great. Or you're out in LA, Miami, you're out in North Dakota, Iowa, Texas, um, Italy, Spain, anywhere. You go out on the night, right? And say you want to establish a connection with someone, meet them at the bar, like all the hip hop songs and stuff. Should people like understand that? You're not, there is like a solid 4% chance, 10, 10%, I don't know what the percentage, what do you think is the percentage of you actually going home to have sex with someone and hook up? It never happened to me, like, that I met someone one night and I spent the night with them. That's never happened? No. One night stand. May I ask you guys if you guys have this in your past? Like, I've had one night stands. I'm not a fan, like, I like to know someone before I actually, like, get down and, you know, like, actually, like, you know, mm -hmm. have sex with them and stuff like that. Um, just, this is just me, I'm, I don't know, it's how I am, but, uh, I feel like, I don't know, you got a really rap game to, like, really, mm -hmm. really, you know, seal the deal on that. In college, it's different. In college, I think it could happen, you know, at the right time. If you get to the, go to the right bar at the right time past 12 o'clock, you might can probably take about two minutes if you really, you know, <laughs> walked in in the right opportunity and stuff like that. So it just depends on the vibe and stuff like that, what's right. going on in your life. Like, if you're just fresh off an ex and everyone knows in college that you're fresh off a bad, uh, off a bad relationship and something like that, and walking into a bar, your eye candy, and everyone notices, oh, he's back on the market. Like, you can literally just walk in sometimes if you're of that, like, caliber to, like, get with someone. So, like, is that really what you want? Yeah, I mean, so it just, it just really, it's, you got to feel the vibe and see what happens.
Yeah, for me, the, the days of stacking chlamydia are over. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to go back into those waters. But, uh, <laughs> the days of stacking chlamydia. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm still open to meeting somebody and having fun, but, yeah. like, my, my go-to isn't that anymore, you know? Like, I, I will definitely go out, have a great night, and then if anything materializes, it's great, but, like, really pushing for that to be the lifestyle that I want, no. Not doing that you were asking like what percentage of the chances that happen? Yeah, basically I'm asking. Yeah, that's basically that's that's um, one of the things I'm mentioning. Yeah. But I'm saying, are you more likely than not to go home with someone? I'm definitely less likely. I feel mm -hmm. like. And having said that, why do you think so many people think like it's gonna work and stuff? Why why are we putting ourselves out there thinking? I mean, it's, it's like why do we play the lottery. Right. The okay. chance is literally like so stacked against you, but we do it all the time. It's for like, sure. It's, it's, that, it's, it's, that that one, it's that chase. For that chase. one person who hits, you're like, my chance could happen. Oh, it works. It, oh, it works. It does work. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I um, like Brian, have also been in situations of pure happiness for a night. And, um,. For whatever reason, it worked, and um, that was cool. And it hasn't happened a lot, but I, I <laughs> there definitely, you know, I'm 27 now, and maybe when I was younger, I thought it was, I had better shots, and now I just like to go out and hang out with the people around me, so I don't have that, um, I don't have that desire anymore. I really don't. But of course, like Sam said, I'm who's not open to having fun if the vibes are right and people give consent and, and uh, you know, go crazy. Just don't get chlamydia. I think, and, uh, I think it's or do. going... Or, have a, or do get chlamydia. Yeah. I also think it's, it's like yeah. going out with that expectation of that happening. Yeah. I think when you go out with the expectation like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna hook up with something. It never happens. It never exactly. happens. Exactly. You're more and likely, if that were to come true and meant to be, it's more likely when you're not looking for it. You could yeah, watch exactly. yourself when you yeah. 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 You you you're expecting it to happen. You're gonna just leave upset. You know what I mean? No, I definitely. I also think it's a big thing like Hollywood and media and stuff like that. Like how many times have we seen a movie or a TV show where a guy or a girl goes out to a bar and they just like meet someone like after them? Like I can just think of like the movie like Top Gun. Like they're in the fucking bar, <laughs> they're singing the song, The Righteous Brothers, and it just happens. You know what I mean? And, like just that. Happens. You know, unfortunately, we love movies. We love rom coms and all that, and that's why we get a false like sense of what the actual relationship love and all that. Is, you know what I mean? And like in my eyes, like I'd rather like make out or like you know just, just kiss someone in, in, at a bar and then like meet up with them a few days later after getting to know them and just like like you know go like hook up with them and like you know have sex with them that night because it's just like mm -hmm. like is it more of a physical attraction? We generally generally like interested. Like if you can hold back and have restraint, I respect you more and I want to pursue you more. I think it's also something that you learn as you get older. Absolutely. I'm learning that in college. Like I'm noticing like I'm noticing my friends. Like I'm someone that only really hooks up with someone. Like I don't like just hook up to hook up. I hook up to date. That's like how I am. I yeah. I like I've never been someone that's just like I just want to get with a million people. I want my fucking roster to be like the opening day roster of Yankees. Like I don't want to put fifty people on it. Like I don't want that. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like I'd rather have a list. I don't want no roster. I want some that cough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I want to select few that, like, yeah, I pursued these people because I was genuinely interested, you know what I mean? And, like, I took the flyer around on them. I'd rather, like, make really a, a, a impact in the moment of them remembering. Like, it's more of an impact, I, I feel, if you're talking to a girl and you don't hook up with them that night and you leave. And I think what you're saying is more of, like, that whole, like, society thing that makes it seem like that's a bad thing. No, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like, oh, you didn't get with anyone last night? What the fuck's wrong with you? Like, come on, like... You didn't get a rebound, you just broke up with your girl. Why aren't you like, like trying? I'm like, no, I'm dealing with me working on me. And you know what? I respect myself more for just working on me. So and people true. are going to notice that. People notice when, you got to also remember, the person you're getting with, like especially in college, the person that you're getting with right now, it might not be the person you're with, but the people around you might be the people that you might want to get with eventually. So they see you all getting with someone immediately after your ex. And they think, like, oh, this person is a fuck boy. They just want to get right now and deal with the pain. They don't know how to deal with their issues. And then they were like, nah, fuck this kid. Why am I going to, why am I ever going to even pursue him? Because he's just fucking around. You know, that's so true. And I even think about like, for me, like coming out of high school, going into college, like the whole thing in high school for us is like, yo, 
fuck as many bitches, that type of that type of language. It was yeah. like, well, what we heard. Yeah. That's what I was just exposed to. So when mm-hmm. I got to college, it's like, yo, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm yeah. supposed to go and like you and your boys, let's go out. You and your have boys fun. go out. Try to be let's meet as yeah, 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 many, yeah, many chicks as possible. Like, yo, it's like that's what we thought was like that's what we're supposed to do. And then like as you get older, you're like, this is just all fucking meaningless. It's like it's gross. It's a it's like yeah. gross. So let's call it yeah. the way it's probably like if you're out, like you're probably shit faced. Probably yeah. not even gonna be that good. And it's just and it's just so, like you know, I'm wasting you my like time girl, doing this. Yeah, like you like the girl, I want I want sex and memorable so that she you know, like if it, that if that connection, which I think is the most important part of a relationship is that physical intimacy because it does heal some things sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um besides, you know, the emotional connection. I would actually you know, I would call sex the second part, emotional connection is number one. But like if it's bad the first time, there's no chance of it ever working. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot yeah. of girls would just be like, that wasn't good, I'm done. I'm yeah, not I, trying again. I ain't throwing a flyer out again. I hit 50 girls from the back. Who did I have sex with? You know, it's like, how many memories are you making here, buddy? You know, you're living the worst life you can possibly. You know, you're doing the worst for yourself. But, but like, again, like I said, it's like something you have to learn eventually. Like, I'm not saying, like, I mean, like, an 18 year old, like, don't, don't do this. You're going to learn eventually. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a learning process. I'm not. I'm saying, yeah, sex is more in that than just but, yeah. going through emotions. Yeah. You know, you need to put a face to somebody. Exactly. You need to have that connection with somebody. Yeah. To, I feel like considerate sex. You know, like, it's like, what are you even doing? What are you even doing out here? Erica, I'd love to hear your perspective on our thoughts. But of course, I would love to hear your side of this regarding the, regarding these ideas of more just hooking up at the bar and stuff, and compare that to intimacy. So I, I don't like, um, like the hooking up kind of thing, because if a guy does, I'm gonna have a guy, but if a guy doesn't, uh, is not like interested in you, doesn't care about you, and you have sex with someone that doesn't care about you and doesn't care, um, if you hook up with someone and you don't know each other and you don't care about each other. They don't know your body, they don't know how you work, so the sex won't be great. It won't be even good, because like, oh, like, you know, that thing. <laughs> there's no like, so like, there's no like emotional connection. It's, it's, not, yeah. it's not only the emotional connection, Or the like chemistry. It's you mean like, are you saying like them knowing your body? <laughs> yeah. Oh like, yeah, no, that only comes with time though. Like even if you have an emotional yeah, connection, you go on dates, that's just gonna take a few times. But also if I'm going out with someone that I know that they care about me, I, I don't have problems telling them. No, yeah, I get that. Yeah, you're more comfortable being like, hey, I like it this way, I like it that way. Yeah, if I'm just hooking up with someone I met at the bar, like I don't feel comfortable with them, so I and I, and I and I know they just wanna have sex and yeah. they don't care about anything else. So I don't like that for that reason. No, I agree with you. I think we can all agree that it's better to have sex with someone you actually like. But I didn't I didn't actually know that guys so do I think in this way. Oh absolutely. <laughs> like the sex is definitely better when it's someone you like. Yeah. Like and you know like there's a connection there. For sure, and but there's also people who just, and this is okay too, as long as people both consent to get your rocks off, the nut for a nut, and that is okay too, as long as people agree, and uh, don't aren't no, influenced yeah, yeah. by anything like alcohol or anything like that too. We're also not most men. <laughs> that, that's a great point. I'm living nut to nut. <laughs> <laughs> it's a um, definitely, it's an all an aspect. If you're not, besides if you're asexual, who doesn't like sex? Let's be real. It's a lot of people don't. Asexual people. Yeah, some yeah. people don't, but... Oh, okay, I, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that, that everybody likes the sexy time. Yeah, but it, like, it's hard having a good sexy time. Like, I mean, you can't have it with everyone. Can you say one more time? You can't have it with everyone. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> like, you can't have it with everyone. Of like, course, of course. Time. Be, so. And regardless, just just be respectful when those times come and do the right thing. And may I ask, though, when things are working out 
when you know somebody actually likes you, likes you, what do you think is the best way to show that? For me, like the classic line from Scarface, it's in the eyes that you go. You never lie. I think you really can tell somebody likes you with the eyes. Uh -huh. Like if they just look at you something, you know, they look at you like, I mean, without, the, the only good example I have, which is a terrible example, they give you the fuck me eyes. And they're like, I really yeah, that's like when they want to fuck you. Somebody help me out. Is anyone a better example of that? Or am I the I'll agree with you. I feel like the eyes, I just actually had this experience to me probably like less than 24 hours ago. Yeah. We won't say names or anything. We'll just call it a pilot. Um, basically, like, she just gave me eyes of like, oh, I dig you. And like, she was listening to the conversation. Was she, almost, was she, was she like looking into your, do you feel like when you were looking at her too, was she almost like, not looking into your soul, but like, yeah, it's something that should be cool. It was more like, you know, like when you're having a conversation with someone, you're both sharing it back and forth. Your eyes, as you can listen with your ears, but listening with your eyes and keeping eye contact. Well, I was about to say, the extended shows eye contact you, shows It that. shows you that you're actively listening. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you could close your eyes and listen, right? I can close my eyes and I can hear everyone around me right now, right? But when I'm actively listening to you, I'm showing you that I'm interested in what you're saying. And that's very important. And I like like last night like, I went on a date and you know, we went out to dinner, we got tacos and stuff like that, had jumbo shrimp, phenomenal. If they weren't that big, I thought they were big. Oh, oh, oh. Totally different point for a different day. Kiss this one, kiss this one, kiss this one. Yeah. Um <laughs> what's it called though? But like um having that eye contact, right? Mm -hmm. It I it made it like it made me feel good. It made me feel like, you know what, I'm having a good conversation. Even if it didn't work out or anything like that, right? Um I like that. I like the experience. You know, it's humanity, the human experience. Like having that conversation is important. Like you want to have a good conversation with someone, and it's all about eye contact. I also think it's about um, closeness. If someone is like, like at a club or like the way you're sitting, and they're inching in closer towards you while mm -hmm. you're talking, right? That shows me interest. Yeah, you know I mean, they're getting closer. They want to sit next to you. It's a lot of like subtle cues that show interest. And it's kind of. What's the word? Yeah, I guess it's kind of obvious too when somebody is genuinely interested in you or not, right? Can I tell you something? Of course. They might not be interested in what you're saying, but they might just want to fuck you. Because like a lot of times, I, so I, I'm not super good at, at like following what people say mm. because I get distracted mm. so easy. So sometimes it happens that I just look at this person I'm with because I like them and I know that I like them because I know I like them personalized and they, they're personalized and everything so I give them those eyes but I'm not listening to a word of what they're saying <laughs> 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 I just know I like them and I just give them, give them those eyes but I can't follow. That's totally okay though, that's totally okay <laughs> but you're still giving them the attention that you feel like they deserve yeah. I'm not even talking about like even like liking them I'm just talking about the eye contact itself just giving someone the eye contact shows them that, hey, I'm interested in you in whatever capacity you want to say and whatever vibe they're pulling off of that. The, the, focus, eye, is on you. the yeah. focus is on you. The eye contact is on you. Like, who wants to, like, like this? Not, I feel like an issue is, as people, like, you know, eye contact is very important when you start dating or you start seeing someone. And then as you get into a relationship, I, there's nothing more than I hate when I see people, like, couples out and they're like talking and texting at the dinner table or not paying attention like to that person. Like I have a rule, if when I'm ordering food, right, I take I like start talking to someone, I take a minute or two minutes to look at the menu with zero like I'm paying attention to the other person, but like I focus in on the menu, I figure it out as quick as I can what I want, or I look up the menu before I go to the place. So then I could automatically talk to that person because I would never want to talk to someone unless we're talking about food of what you want about something while looking for food. Like, oh yeah, you know, that was a cool thing that happened today, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, work was tough. Oh, I should get that as an appetizer. You want this? Like, you're interrupting that conversation. Uh -huh. It's also like being rude to that person. So it's like in my eyes, I want direct contact and conversation with that person. So I feel like the eyes are the first, the eyes are the first place to start to show interest in intentions. No matter what intentions you want. That's true. Sam, were you, were you about to say something before? 
something really genuine or sweet and then let's say like your girlfriend just like grabs your thigh and like oh I just, like, <laughs> they just grab the thigh they give a quick, they give a quick squeeze it's almost like a oh i'd want to do that with you or it's like oh i'm i'm recognizing that like that was a touching moment and like yeah that'd be cool with you too i, I think that's like, also identifying love languages absolutely like, hardest part of physical touch you know what i mean quality time so, Identifying those is showing interest mm -hmm. and playing into what they like. Those are the things that mean something to them. Does everybody know their love language here? <laughs> I, I like to think I know what I do, but is there yeah, a who host here, here, man? Like, <laughs> who's asking the questions here? I'll call back. This is really great. Listen, I'm having an absolute blast, but we're already at an hour and a half, and we have to go soon. We have plans all together, but is there anything that I I or you all have mentioned that we haven't mentioned yet. We literally, I have enough notes to do this uh, second part. Yeah, this could this could be like a part one, to be Seriously. honest. Seriously, you know I'm you know I can get um, on it with you guys. I think this is going to be really good. I'll just say this: stop overthinking. Like at the end of the day, when we overthink, we make things so much bigger than what they are. Just enjoy, live the moment, make a memory or two, and if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, move on to the fucking next. It's that simple. There's not, I'm not someone like there's only one person for everyone. Like that, it doesn't make sense. There's too many people, too many people are existing and not existing at the same time in this world. Just stop overthinking and just go to the basics, be a decent human being, talk to people, and stop real, real talk. Stop shooting above your weight class at some things <laughs> and expecting different results like, like you know what i mean like the, the idea of insanity is doing the same thing expecting different results time and time again like if you're shooting for like 15 out of 10 and you're not changing up your game all the time like come on now like you gotta spice it up a little bit sometimes you know what i mean like you gotta you can't keep on doing the hey how are you on a dating app and expect you know it always to work like <laughs> right? stop overthinking just trust your instincts oh man and it's okay to try and fail too, because that's how you work that muscle up of talking to people. I'd say, do it till you learn where your your cap is, and work on that, because that's gonna identify your your game basically. You don't need to be the best guy ever. You need to be yourself, the best version of yourself. And it's okay to fail in my book. Like for as many rejections as you go through, we're gonna talk about the ones that succeeded. So just go through the motions and you're gonna you're gonna work that out and you're gonna figure out who you are and who you're gonna love better and how to be a better version of yourself. And then for me, I I'd say believe actions rather than words. Mm -hmm. For me, people will say whatever. You can say a million no, things. <laughs> no, I yeah. You can say a thousand yeah. things. Oh yeah, exactly. You mm -hmm. can say a thousand things. But they mean nothing if you don't fall, go go ahead with it. You know what I mean? So it's the actions you. So for me, I always say like, yo, your actions. Even though that's a cliche, actions speak louder than words. They do. Your actions will go will take you farther than any words. Because you can say whatever to a girl or a guy, whatever. But it's it's you showing them that you care through your actions that matters. Um, what I want to say is there's no need to play any kind of game in the dating thing because like if you have to think about what you have to text to someone and you have to like you know prepare a text or like prepare what to say it means that that person is not 
for you. And nobody, like not everybody is made, made for you. So if you don't vibe with a person, if you don't find like a connection with a person, that's fine. There's not there's nothing wrong with you, there's nothing wrong wrong with that person. That person. With that person. Um just go on, find out another person that is what you're looking for and that there's no need to play games to like think of what to tell that person. Like you just have to be yourself and if that person is not for you then you know it will never be for you. I think the greatest advice I ever got was don't date until you love being alone. Because if you don't know how to be alone and deal with being alone, you will chase and chase and chase at the wrong things. And you're going to get into relationships and situationships that are not meant for you because you'd rather not be in on a Friday night when your friends are away and you're alone watching Netflix. You need to be okay and comfortable with the uncomfortable. And that's being alone for a bit. Because guess what? Eventually, it might work out and you will find someone. Or it doesn't. And guess what? You'll be the cool uncle. Like that's just how it is. Like okay, it's like you gotta be what you gotta be. You know what I mean? We're all put on this earth for a purpose. Be okay with being alone. Man, I have some amazing guests right here. This was everything you wanted in a productive conversation, and I thank each and every single one of you for this. So again, I want to thank my guests, Will Anchari, Sam Anchari, Erica from Italy, and Brian. <laughs> My name is Matt Brown, and I just want to say thank you all for an incredible talk on dating, and I really think a lot of people get a lot out of this. Thank you. So we'll see you all very, very soon. Thank you. All right. We'll wrap that up. Great job, guys. Thank you. That was fucking man. Let's go and get laid. Let's go. <laughs> 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 <laughs>